Today's video is the second part of our Touch OSC tutorial. Welcome back to the Hive School where we help you one up your live event production workflows. In our previous video, we showed you how to control your disguise system using Touch OSC with an iPad. We utilized the basic Touch OSC interface from the disguise website, which is ideal for simple transport control. However, Touch OSC offers far more capabilities and today we're going to look at three different ways to use it with disguise. Assuming you already watched the set of tutorial, and since this is part two, we're just going to dive straight into the good stuff. The first thing you'll need to know is what an OSC message looks like. OSC messages have two parts, an address that typically starts with a forward slash, and then a value, which is sometimes called an argument. Let's take a look at a real world example of this. If we open up the disguise project that we started last time, and then open up our OSC transport, you can see some pre-configured messages. Each one starts with a forward slash and then reads D3 slash transport control and then the parameter that it's controlling. In addition to the address, we need to include a value. For the default disguise messages, sending a float of one will trigger that control. So a float value of 1.0 sent to forward slash D3 forward slash show control forward slash play will trigger a play command on the currently active track. The next thing we should do is verify that the OSC messages are reaching our server. Disguise has a monitor for incoming messages. You can access this by going to the OSC indicator on the top bar. Right click to open the recorders menu and then left click to open the monitors. You'll see the incoming message and its value. If we use the default disguise touch OSC layout, we can hit the play button and we'll see the float value coming in. Now, if I hit the stop button a few times, we can also observe what that looks like too. Familiarising yourself with how things appear when they're functioning correctly can be invaluable when it comes to troubleshooting your own messages later. Okay, so we did transport control in the last video, so making it again from scratch probably isn't the most exciting first part of this lesson. But I still think that learning how to create these controls from scratch is a really important part of learning to OSC. If we go to the menu on the right and we open the document section, we can change the size of our layout. If you know what device you're going to use this on, then you can Google the native res and put that in here. However, Touch OSC will scale your canvas to fit the size of your screen, so it's not super important to get this exactly. I do quite like having my iPad in landscape orientation when I'm using Touch OSC, so I'm going to swap the numbers around here, making it 860 wide and 640 pixels high. To add control elements to your layout, right click on the canvas, a list of available elements will open, allowing you to select the ones that you want. We won't cover all of the elements in this video, so I definitely encourage you to do your own experiments. For this demo, we're going to start by adding a button and a fader. The menu on the right side of the screen might seem a little bit overwhelming at first, but most of the parameters are pretty intuitive. At the top, you'll find the X and Y coordinates for positioning the button that we're configuring and below that are options for width and height. You can also customise the button's colour using the colour picker provided. Most of this really comes down to which controls you think you need and your taste in terms of how you want it to look. I'll leave you to decide how you want to set up your layout. If we scroll down the right hand menu to the purple section labelled OSC, we can configure the message sent when our button is pressed. In the grey text we can see the currently configured message which says forward slash button one X. A little bit further down, you'll notice a section that says forward slash name. The name part of the address is a variable and corresponds to the button's name. We can verify this by going back up to the top of the menu and I'll change our button's name to Hive School. When we return to our address parameter, you'll see that it's updated to match. While this feature can be useful for complex layouts, we won't be using it today. I did, however, want to demonstrate how the default setup works. But for now, we'll remove what's in there and input a constant, forward slash D3 forward slash show control forward slash stop. Currently, the argument is set to send a float of 1.0 when the button is pressed. This is ideal for triggering disguise transport control as that's exactly what the system is expecting. If we click the X below the address, you'll see that the scale shows a minimum of zero and a maximum of one. Let's say we wanted to send a five when our button was pressed, we could just increase the maximum value. Why not have a go at creating your own set of transport controls, for example, play, stop, next section and previous section, or anything else that's part of the disguise transport control set? The 
A great example of sending different values into disguise is when we want to trigger various trap views. Let's create three more buttons in our layout and then add the constant forward slash D3 forward slash show control forward slash Q to each. We'll set the first button's argument to one, the second to two, and the third to three. When we've synced these to our iPad, you'll see that we can navigate between the different cues on our timeline using these newly created buttons. We showed you this process of using external control to trigger cues in our MIDI controller video, but I think it's really worthwhile to know how to set this up using OSC too. By using expressions, we can open up many more aspects of the server for external control. Let's explore how to do that now. In disguise, I've created a simple video layer mapped to our default projection surface. I'd like to control the layer's brightness using the fader that we created in our Touch OSC layout. Let's open up the video layer and right click the brightness value. Currently expression is set to self, which means it's listening to any of the keyframes on the layer. Let's remove self and replace it with OSC and a colon. This tells disguise to listen to incoming OSC messages. After the colon, we need to insert the OSC address, but using dots instead of forward slashes. Since we're creating this on the fly, I'm gonna make one up. Let's use OSC colon d3.video1.brightness. You'll notice that when we've set this, the surface will go black. This is because Disguise is now listening for an incoming value on that OSC address, but it isn't receiving one yet. Let's switch back to our Touch OSC editor to set up that end. With the fader cr we created before, let's modify the address with a constant using the address that we just created in disguise. That's forward slash D3 forward slash video one forward slash brightness. Notice that we're using slashes and not dots this time. We go through the same process to sync our OSC layout to our device as we did last week. And with the new fader configuration, you'll see that we've got full iPad control of our video's brightness value. Not every parameter in disguise can be controlled with an expression. You'll find that most can. With a bit of time and patience, you can set up fairly sophisticated controls of your project using expressions, which offer a wealth of possibilities. It's worth noting that Disguise has recently relaunched their user manual, which provides more in-depth information on the various different applications of expressions. Perhaps we'll even do a future video showing you some of the other things that you can do with them. That brings us to the end of this video, which was the second in a two-part mini-series on using Touch OSC with Disguise. If you think we've earned it, We'd really appreciate it if you could drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel. From everyone here at the Hive School, we'll see you next time. Cheers.